Oh. Oh, Bill. I mean, none of this was your idea, though, was it? I mean, the flowers, opera tickets. I just want us to get back together. What's wrong with that? I'm not sure I do. And putting yourself through a night at the opera, I mean... I appreciate the gesture, my love, I really do, but neither of us would have a very nice night, would we? Listen. Why don't you give these beautiful flowers to Salah? As a thank you for putting you up, hmm? She'll be overjoyed. This had better be good. Life and death, how's one? Yeah, not good. Who's David's? Of all the people that you could pick to risk our livelihood on, Dan, I'm saying you. So am I! What are you doing here, anyway? Put in a bag of chips. Uh, talking of life and death. Well, your mum's making the tea. Our Finn gets bigger portions than me these days. How can we remind ourselves why? Because she loves me. She is still moving into Molly's flat, isn't she? Yeah, of course. Cos if she don't, here, sign that. Hey, Death warrant. Because if our Mel comes home and she's still living with us, she's police. She knows 20 different ways to kill you. I'm not leaving that. Talking of dead men walking. Is Tina ready? Do you not check your voicemails? Hey? No, I switched off. She knows. I tried telling you. Knows what? Everything. Emails the lot. How? Does it matter? She's looking for you and she ain't happy. Tina's not the sort of girl to get the wrong side of. Wait, how does she know, Daryl? You ought to be there, mate. What? You told her? She figured it out, honest. You know, thanks. I thought you were supposed to be a mate. <laughs> I feel sick. Well, if you love somebody, you're supposed to trust him. <laughs> Control freak, oh yeah, absolutely. But I'll talk to you later, okay? Tina, I'm sorry. For what? Do we not get in caught? Okay, you've checked all my emails. You could check this and all. See why I've been ringing, who's rang me? Go on, you can do a pack of my bags. Oh, please, no. Don't you dare come near me. Making sure she's not slacking. It's Friday night. She shouldn't be working like this. Yeah, well, she did volunteer. Yeah, because we're desperate for the money. After what Tony's doing to my dad. Yeah, well, he could solve that by taking up Tony's offer, couldn't he, you know? Yeah, but he doesn't want any offer. He wants his garage. Yeah, well, it's got nothing to do with me, really. But it's to expand the factory. You'll get loads out of that. <laughs> yeah, but... Look, Rosie, it's difficult. Hmm. Somebody needs to get him to lay off my dad. And if you can't, or won't, maybe I could get Liam to. Liam? This has got nothing to do with him. Yeah, but he's a mate of Tony's. You could talk to him, if I persuaded him to. There's no need to involve Liam. Now, if this isn't sorted out by the time I get back on my business trip, I'll do my best. OK. Oh, no, don't. Please, let me explain. What? How you made me look completely stupid? I don't think so. No, I didn't. You're not. OK, how did you do it? Hey? My emails, I had a password. What I guessed? You know, pound girl. You worked in a pound you shop. You flaming liar! You found it in my address book! There you go! I am stupid! I thought I could treat this like my own home. I don't need to hide stuff away. 
But all along, you were going through my things. Well, I thought that we didn't even have secrets between each other. About your secret. What? That you're such a sad, pathetic loser. That you can't have a proper, grown-up relationship. Oh, no. You have to cheat, lie and sneak about. Rosie, you do know how much I value you, don't you? I mean, not just for the work you do around here. As a mate. As a confidant. Thanks. I mean, I rely on you so much. And, well, while I'm away, I'd like to be sure that you're looking after my interests. Looking out for me. As a mate. Of course. I mean, the stuff you don't need to be talking to anyone else about. Not Tony. Not, well, not anyone. Carla, you can trust me. Mm. Honestly. Thank you. Listen. I know your mum won't have me much tonight, so... Well, this might help. Yeah, it, it, it does. Thank you. And don't be telling anybody else about that. It's between you and me, all right? Yeah, of course. Have a good trip, Carla. Thanks, love. Mm. <laughs> Fancy a drink with me? What, in the pub? Mm, I'll stick to soft drinks. <laughs> Actually, yeah, come on, the weekend starts here. You know, it's one thing getting Sally on side, but don't misjudge Rosie. You little mini-me. <laughs> Never underestimate the potential a teenage girl has for troublemaking, especially that one. I'm sure you keep on a tight rein. Yeah, but I'm going away, aren't I? Carl, my love, you know I don't trust anyone. And I'm not going to lose a minute's sleep over an empty-headed bit of fluff like Dozy Rosie. <laughs> and neither should you. Please. What can I do to stop you leaving? Why did you do it, David? Why spoil everything? Well, because I thought you might be getting back with Matt. I know you're still in contact with him. I lived here with you and your mum. Do you think I'd really do that if I wanted to be with somebody else? You think that little of me? No, of course I don't. You read my emails, you knew now what's going on, but that didn't stop you. Tina, there was stuff in there that you didn't tell me, yeah? And I thought... Well, like the gig tickets. I thought I could be your perfect boyfriend. I know it probably sounds daft now, but you'd have only done the same. You're so wrong. I'm just myself. I don't try and be something that I'm not. If people don't like that, we'll stuff them. All right, I just wanted you to love me more, OK? Oh, right! Now we're getting to it! It's what you do! What you've been doing all along! Well, I don't know what you mean. No? You play with people's heads. You love all the mind games. You should brag to me about doing it to your mother, your sister and Jason. You're different, you know that. I thought I was. But I'm not. You want to control me like you controlled them. That's balmy. You get off on it. Use a boast about it to Daryl. Well, I flaming well fell for it. Well, stuff you, David. Nobody messes with my head. What are you doing? Do you think we'll get another chance to read it? He'll be upstairs for ages yet. How can you be sure? Because I told him I'd taken some magazines up to the bathroom and that it might be in there. Not read out like this since Peter moved to Portsmouth. Liked his smut, did our Peter? Well, you used to read Peter's books. Magazines, usually. I must admit, I never pictured you and Kenneth getting up to some of this stuff. Well, I hope you never pictured me and Ken getting up to anything. Oh, well, that's nearer the mark, if I'm honest. But then, 
I never had you down as a pert-bottomed goddess, either. Hey. You've got 30 seconds, and it's my go again. You didn't read over the page, did you? No, no, I, I struggled with one of them words. Is it Latin? Our hero has just gone back home to a marriage as stale as the breath of a 20-a-day habit wafting across the table. You found it! Oh, thank God! Where was it? This was written long before you met our Deirdre, wasn't it? Well, the original, yes, but the beauty of what I'm doing now is I'm revisiting it with 40-odd more years of life experience. Oh, and some of that experience must have been pretty painful. Well, that's life, Deirdre. It's not all a bed of roses, so where was it? Mixed up with a cookery box. Oh, such a relief. Yes, for all of us. Let's go for a drink to celebrate. Well, actually, uh, I'd like to do a bit more work on it. Actually, I was talking to my mother. I mean, why would you want to spend your time with a fag-smoking philistine? Oh, Deirdre, I have apologised. You haven't even begun. <laughs> we were on holiday once, self-catering. Last night there, she wants a biscuit. I says, we had none, the cupboards are bare. She looks at me with these big, solemn eyes. She says, where's its eyes? I says, what? She says, if the cupboards are bare, where's its eyes? <laughs> <laughs> She's a lovely girl. It means the world to David. I know you've been through some tough times, but he's a credit to you. Thank you. I was wondering, um, I mean, Say no if this is a bad idea, but... Just leave me alone, scumbag! What's going on? Debbie, open the car. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, I, I was just passing bumped into Gail. Look, I was only trying to make you happy. What if I did something to upset you, David? Then what? Well, that wouldn't happen. Well, I'm not giving it a chance. I don't want to end up in the canal or a heap at the bottom of your stairs. What, you really think I could do that I to don't you? know, David. And you know what? Neither do you. I thought we had a couple of cans in. Oh, come on. Me and you have always been able to chill over a couple of beers. Yeah, and when our Mel gets back, she'll accuse me of not looking after you properly. Well, she won't be back for a while yet. One of the kids will see. Or Daryl. Anyway, someone will blab, and it'll all be my fault. It won't be your problem, though. Not if you're in your new place over at Mally's. <sighs> this refurbished flat of his. Mally's idea of a refurb will be to put a vase underneath the drips coming through the ceiling instead of a bucket. Yeah, well, we'll find out tomorrow when we go and check it out, won't we? I'll bring your medication through. go back inside and try and sort this out calmly. If you wouldn't let him walk all over you, maybe he wouldn't think he could do it to everybody else. Can you open the boot? There's no need to start on Gail, though. Let's just get out of here. Tina, please, I love you. you. Don't. You don't even understand what love is. Not if you have to do stuff like this. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know what? Me too. Oh, come on. Tina! 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 Please! But look at me! Don't leave me, please! 